Hey, how you guys doing? Welcome to a thin red line. Oh wait, wrong channel. Sorry, I was just updating Luis Molina's J date profile, and I was sorry, I had it on my mind. Um, anyways, back to some random uh, hockey uh, stuff here I got for you. Um, we're gonna do a little uh, overview of the Protec Sport uh, goalie mask made by uh, Michel Dalagnari in uh, Laval, outside of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Um, it's hockey night, and we're gonna. Do a little mask review here quick. Um, here's the mask here for you. Just want to kind of give you guys a quick overview of it. You might have seen a couple pictures online of it, but just something little fun I had made for me. Um, kind of a bucket list item um, growing up, you know, back uh, playing back in the early, mid, late 90s. Um, I always, you know, loved his masks and it was always the French Canadian goalies that wore them. Uh, just a little overview of me uh, going back. You know, I grew up playing in Michigan and played quite a bit in. Uh, Canada all over and uh, once me and my uh, buddy were pretty much of age uh, 18 we uh, used to travel over to uh, Quebec quite a bit and go party and have fun and uh, get crazy and Montreal is our hangout and you know I'm sure you guys have been there before and heard stories but yes they were all true um, great place to go have fun be, be wild when you're 18 because you can't do it anywhere else legally so uh, just going back to this mask here I ordered this probably about eight months ago and it's something I really wanted to get before my birthday just kind of was like a, a one of those bucket list you know items turning 40 yuck 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 but this is something um, like I said I wanted to do before um, I get to the point where I can't play anymore because eventually that will happen and it's something that reminded me of my childhood and like I said going back to you know watching all the French Canadian goalies of the mid to late 90s definitely was the inspiration here I reached out to Michelle and uh, had a couple emails with him and kind of went back and forth about the process and you know what what he needed from me and basically I told him a couple things I wanted you know like a white cage, um, a white mask and other than that I said surprise me so you know put my deposit down and then basically um, he wanted a head mold and he he said I'll reach out um, two weeks before I need the head mold and you know right now I just gotta kind of wait and like I said the waiting is the hardest part because not a quick process. Um, I think anywhere from 30 to 35 week wait time. I'm not sure what it is today, but um, I know Michelle's getting a little bit older. He's got you know a lot of stuff going on, and this is not his full time job. This is his hobby. So you know sometimes things come up, and that happened in my case, and it took a little longer than expected. But you know it's okay. Um, it wasn't something I needed right away. It was more of a you know luxury item where I could wait, and when I, once it showed up, it showed up, and. Uh, you know, if you know me, I'm not patient at all whatsoever, um, so that was the hardest part. But going back to this mask, um, you know, I picked the, the highest uh, level he had with the materials. And I think, you know, I can't remember what exactly it came out to cost-wise, but it's still cheaper than any other pro-level mask you can get. And like I said, this is handmade um, by a master craftsman who's been doing this for decades. And, you know, NHL goalies are wearing his masks and have worn his masks for years. Um, why wouldn't you trust it? Because obviously, I'm not getting NHL shots at my head. But they they were and they kept wearing these masks. That says a lot. Um, Michelle was great. His email communications were awesome. You know, back and forth. Um, he was pretty quick. Like I said, it's not his full time job, so you know, I kind of knew to expect at least a couple days to hear back. For but usually it was quicker. And it wasn't just you know, hey, your number. Um, you know, give me your information. You know, he would ask how I'm doing, how, how's everything doing, and we kind of had a little banter back and forth, which was pretty cool. And, you know, I kind of told him why I wanted to get the mask made and what I was doing it for, and, you know, he, he thought it was a really cool idea and enjoyed the process. And, like I said, I let him kind of go wild with it. So, I would say before the end of the year, I got an email from him saying, hey, you know, um, send me your head mold, um, and then we're going to go from there. So, made the head mold, sent that in, and then played the waiting game. and. You know, it took a little bit longer than I thought um, because, like I said, he had a couple um, family issues come up, so he had to do that first, and I totally understand. And, you know, about maybe three to four weeks later, I finally got email saying, hey, the mask is good. Um, just want to confirm, you know, where I'm sending it to or if you want me to send it to a painter. And, uh, you know, from there. So then I played the waiting game once again, once again with customs. Um, finally, the mask showed up, and definitely a great surprise. Um, Obviously, it didn't look like this when I got it. It was white, but you can see here it's the Brodeur mold, and that's the only kind of thing that was a little bit frustrating. Is I got the mask and 
I didn't know what the mold was and he didn't tell me. So I kind of had to reach out to him and ask him, hey, what, what mask is this? Because I was between a couple different ones that I thought it might be and he kind of, you know, said, hey, it's a Brodeur. Um, so then I'm like, okay, cool. So then I started, you know, researching the mask a little bit more and, you know, looking at Brodeur's old masks. And one thing on here, definitely, um, it's, a, it's a big mask from front to back, you can tell. It's definitely a good size. Um, the chin is kind of short, especially where the mask sits on your head. So definitely adding a dangler to this, and I'm pretty sure that's why uh, Martin Brodeur wore one as well. Because um, like I said, it, it, you know, being a bigger guy, um, kind of feel a little bit exposed there in the, the neck chin area. And I had a, you know incident uh, last game where I got a puck to the neck and it hit the collarbone and that it definitely did not feel good. So I'm uh, gonna put a dangler on this here shortly. But you know, another cool thing about this mask is inside you have the option of getting it um, you know, totally flat and finished and I said no, I want it to be the way it was because definitely you could tell it looks hand, you know, formed, hand scraped, hand molded, it's been touched by a human, not a machine. So I thought that was definitely a cool thing. So I enjoyed seeing that. Um, as for the mask, um, I just got a dial on the fit. The, the materials inside are super, super plush and it, it's very comfortable. Um, it's definitely a little bit heavier than what I'm used to. I'm currently wearing the CC, CCM uh, Access Pro mask. That thing's uh, super light. And I also got a couple of mask marble masks as well. And those are um, definitely heavier than this. So this is kind of right in between. And I kind of got to get, you know, like, like I said, used to it, used to the fit. I think once I wear it a couple of times in the game, I'll have to kind of you know adjust it from there and figure out what fits best but super comfortable super plush um like i said it doesn't feel heavy but you can definitely tell it's a big mask on your head um as for the wrap i um jf omega got um it done for me and it has a montreal quebec theme to it so it's got you know quebec uh welcome to you know quebec i've got just random Canadian stuff on there and some inside joke stuff and I've got some loonies and toonies, some poutine uh, bagels and then Thursday the old uh, club downtown that was a pretty pretty fun spot back in the day and then you got the stadium and the bridge and everything else so and a couple other hidden uh, hidden things in there as well that are kind of inside jokes between me and my buddy so um, definitely a cool little bucket list item like I said um, if you're gonna get one get one sooner than later because you know Michelle is getting a little bit older and you know he's got life going on around him and you know how life's been the last couple of years has been a challenge so do it now do not wait i know it's a long waiting period but you know like i said you do it now you get it hopefully before christmas um also one thing you know i would recommend is you know what you want more um and kind of let him do his thing but also give him a few things of what you want um if i could go back i would have made the chin a little bit longer probably another half inch inch longer and then um, done a couple other minor things, but other than that, like I said, it's a beautiful mask, handmade, you can tell, um, care and effort that went into it. And he really cares about what he does and he wants you to be happy and the customer service is unbelievable. So reach out to Michelle at uh, Protect Sport Masks. Definitely get one made for yourself. Yes, it's 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 bucket list item, you know, but hey, you know, you only live once and I don't know how long I've got left to play. So like I said, I'd rather do it now than do it in a year or two and then have to stare at it and never have to, you know, never get to wear it in a game. So, uh, thanks for watching. You know, like I said, any comments, suggestions, uh, roast me, do what you got to do. But uh, right now it's uh, second intermission. Rangers are up 4-2. to two. So, looking like a game seven in Carolina coming up. So, have a great rest of your Saturday night and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.